All right, now, health headlines to your health today. We all take advantage of the sunny summer weather, but tick season is here. And it's not great this year. Haley Hernandez, what's happening? I mean, ticks are pretty creepy, right? We oh, all saw the video earlier and we were like, ew. I remember them growing up. I mean, just ugh, Yeah, when no they fans. get on you and then they, yeah. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. But even worse, they can also spread disease, of course, as we know. And studies show that on average, people with Lyme disease wait more than a year for a correct diagnosis. So joining me now to talk about this is Dr. David Purse, Chief Medical Officer with the City of Houston. Hey, good morning, Dr. Purse. Hey, good morning. So how many cases do we know of in our area? It's it's less common here than other parts of the country, right? Well, it is. We generally see Lyme disease in the Northeast and North Central United States, but we do get it here in Houston. Typically, we get about two to three cases a year. Um, in the last four years, we've had uh, only 56 cases total, but we have had some cases where we get some more. Now, this year, it's early, and we've already got three cases, so we're on track to have a busy year. Yeah, I mean, and is it possible, though, that those numbers are also underreported because there are at home tests and other ways that people can find out if they have Lyme disease? Yeah, that's true. There are at home tests. And the problem is that uh, most of those are not yet FDA approved. And so they may be testing positive for other tick borne illnesses besides Lyme disease. And so your best bet really is to get with your doctor and go through all, everything that's happened, all of your symptoms, the rashes you may or may have had, get the CDC approved test to find out if it is Lyme disease because there are treatments. But, you know, depending on what you've been infected with, you, their, their treatment may be different. So you want to make sure you get treated for the right thing. So just to reiterate, you're recommending people go to their doctor, get a test through their doctor, um, not so much the over-the-counter test that you can do. And you can also go to a lab quest and get a test through there. Are those not FDA-approved tests also? Uh, to my knowledge, there's only one FDA approved test um, that and that's the, the one that the CDC recommends. It's actually a, a two step test. Now, it's only one blood sample, but is a two step test that's done in the laboratory. It's a little uh, more refined than what you're going to get with the over the counter uh, testing. Got it. And what are the symptoms of Lyme disease? What makes this disease so bad? Yeah, so Lyme disease, typically when you first get infected, um, there's going to be a rash. And the rash will begin anywhere between three days and a month afterwards, generally around seven days. And even at seven days, that may be fairly far after you got bit by the tick. And remember, people get bit by ticks when they're outdoors, generally, right? When you go on a camping trip or if you're somebody who you know, goes and works outside, you may or may not, we find that about half the people who get bit by the tick don't remember uh, the tick bite. I should say half the people with Lyme disease mm -hmm. don't even remember the tick bite. And the rash is a big rash. It'll start, generally, it starts right where the tick bit you, and it's a red rash. It's a little warm to the touch. It's not painful and it's not itchy. It'll start where you got bit and it'll spread and it can get to be a foot across. And the classic appearance of it is there'll, it'll start off red and as it gets bigger, that redness will clear in the middle. And then as it gets even bigger, redness will start in the beginning again. So it looks like a bullseye or we call it a target lesion. So you got the red spot, you then you got normal skin and then another big red round circle around that. Um, it can appear anywhere on your body and after you get the first rash, you can get, which generally is where the tick bit you, you can then get other rashes elsewhere, generally following afterwards. You always get fever, body aches, chills, swollen lymph nodes, um, and you can get those even without the rash. Mm -hmm. So the, the late symptoms, then, you know, going going later on, um, you know, months or such later, you get headaches, you get neck stiffness, you can get a paralysis of one side of the face or the other. It looks very much like what we call Bell's palsy. Mm -hmm. Joint pain in your hands, or I'm not in your hands, but in your knees and other large joints. You can get pain in the tendons, muscles, um, heart palpitations. It can affect your nervous system. And this is one of the big things that people who have you know, long-term Lyme disease get dizziness. You can get inflammation of the brain and the spinal cord. You get nerve pain with shooting pains going down your hands and feet. And you know these are also symptoms that can be caused by other things. So making the diagnosis is often very difficult. Now, they're a good reason to go and talk to your doctor about everything that has happened to try and narrow down the diagnosis if it's Lyme disease or maybe it's one of these other illnesses which would have a different treatment. So you want to make sure you know what you're treating. Yeah. But you know what, Dr. Purse, I've interviewed people before who have had Lyme disease, and it I hear the same story over and over again that it takes them a long time to get a diagnosis. Do you have any idea why that is? Well, I think a lot of it is for, to know what you're looking for, because what you described, you know, with the exception of that, that early rash, which, by the way, there's... So Lyme disease is not the only one that causes that rash, but that's a pretty classic Lyme disease rash. 
Um, the rest of the symptoms can be caused by many, many illnesses. And so it's, it's often difficult to find out, you know, what it is that you're hunting down because the CDC, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the two-step test for Lyme disease is the first part is what we call, it's a, a screening test and a test for a, a whole bunch of things one of which is Lyme disease. And so if it's positive, they can, or even equivocal, they would then go on to a very specific test that looks specifically for the uh, antibodies for Lyme disease. And your body, you know, produces the antibodies. That's what the test is for. The other problem is that sometimes if you get tested too early and you haven't generated enough antibodies yet to test positive, you'll get an equivocal test or perhaps a negative test. Generally, people have these antibodies for a pretty long period of time. So, um, and, and then people who have chronic Lyme disease, of course, they've got them for years and years. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, it, it is a very difficult diagnosis to make because there's overlap with other illnesses uh, that, that, that make it a challenge. Yeah, and then of course, I'm sure it's even more of a challenge for doctors in our area since, as you mentioned, we don't see as many cases as they do, say, in the Northeast. That's right, that's exactly right, yeah. All right, Dr. Purse, as always, thank you for joining me on a Monday morning.